Hey everybody, this is Rebel Builder with another Expanded Universe TIE Fighter mock. This time is the TIE Phantom. Now this one has to be one of my most requested mocks, you know, up there with the TIE Defender, I would say. And I've been working on this one for quite a while and finally pulled it off. And this was one of my most challenging builds to date. Obviously the geometry is very unusual for LEGO. Building in these triangles, these 120 degree uh, wing kind of angles here like this you know it's very difficult to do in Lego and I also held myself to some standards you know there were some things I wanted to do with some snot techniques like on the side here and I'll give you some better looks at that in a minute so when I start a build like this I do this um, collection process of images you know I go on the internet and I read about this thing and find all the pictures I can and I collect them in a note uh, called Evernote where I can kind of see them all together so that's what uh, got me going as far as um, you know inspiration and started to have some ideas it started with you know this millennium falcon cockpit piece here that's from the force awakens 2015 version and then the next thing was the you know the wings or the solar panels now i had the idea that these were pretty much going to be just builds just like my tie interceptor and oftentimes with building, I can have some great ideas, but it doesn't always work out. So playing with the correct geometry here was quite challenging, you know. And then the next part was, how do I connect it into the body? Now I'm going to take off the cockpit here and show you in a second. But I had lots of options as far as Technic pieces or, um, you know, just a combination of those. And I actually kind of came up with a cool solution where I have some plates they kind of go into the middle and they actually go through this section of plates here. And honestly, that was one of those ideas that kind of hit me in the middle of the night because I was really struggling with this. I kind of had it all connected and I was using kind of those plates with Technic pins on them to connect it. And it just wasn't sturdy enough. The whole thing just kind of sagged and drooped and I was not happy with how that was looking. But once I got that kind of connection built, then I was really kind of firing on all cylinders. But you'll also notice that the top wing or the top solar panel is a little bit different construction. It's going to have some extra pieces here um, and kind of a different connection along this um, section here. Now, if you're paying attention, you'll notice that I have studs on this side and also studs on this side. And that was something I kind of focused on early on that I didn't want to have studs on one side and then the underside showing on this side so what i actually did is it's plates built back to back like this and really what this section here does is you know you can kind of see some pieces in here um, you know kind of a plate with you know the the two round connections on either side and then i did some pieces here where these pieces here and then on the front is enough to kind of clamp the whole thing together so really, for the most part, this section isn't, you know, really held together by studs or anything. And um, it actually is pretty sturdy and holds on there pretty tight. So once I got that section built, you know, I had all of the wings, I had the geometry, and then I really got going. So what I have here in this section, this is a row of plates kind of built from the back forward. And then it's connected to kind of the center with some axle pieces. And then I didn't want to just use slopes for this section here. So this was another one of those sections that took a lot of experimenting. And so what it is, is actually you got some wedge plates and plates underneath here, tiles. And then there's actually some hinges underneath that kind of connected at this angle. And so the geometry really worked out where you can see I've got one of those two by two wedge plates on either side there. Kind of a newer piece. I was happy I was able to use that and uh, created this really cool look of these slopes but it's kind of a little bit of an unusual angle for lego again pretty proud of how that turned out and then another big challenge to figure out was the back here now i was able to kind of recreate some really cool geometry in here and kind of covering up all this technic mess that i have underneath but the challenge was is getting all of these wedge plates to kind of come in here and give it the illusion that, you know, it all kind of connects together when really none of these plates 
100% lineup, you can see that you know this level here isn't on par with that level there, and um, you know so I just kind of played with it and played with it till I got it to kind of work. And again, I got to use those two by two wedge plates there, and just kind of built up some layers and did some cool greebling. I kind of like these pieces here, and, you know, my favorite grill tiles and stuff. And this build was full of a lot of frustration where I would work on something and work on something and not be happy how it was looking, how it was working out geometry wise. And then all of a sudden it just kind of clicks and this rear section is a great example of that. And then once I figure out these main structural elements, then, you know, the end is kind of the funnest part for me where I get to do a lot of greebling like this section here. You know, I get to use some of my favorite grill tile pieces. And of course I have to throw in a little sand blue here. I like how I use this uh, kind of backwards two by one round slope, kind of like that look there and got cannons underneath here. You know, used a lot of those flick fire missiles. I, those are a part that I've just got a ton of, but I think they really work well for a lot of greebling applications. And then again, the top section is a little different. I tried to create, you know, a lot of the same look as down below, but it's got this section back here and really what this is, is this is brackets kind of going this way and this way, held together by these grill tiles. You know, that's giving this whole section strength, holding these wedge plates together back to back. It's kind of an unusual technique, but you know, it actually worked out. And I have cannons at the end of all of the wingtips. And again, you know, this top one's a little different because this is actually serving a structural function. But you know, threw in some dark bluish gray here just to give it a little more, um, color contrast. And here is a look at my cockpit section. It's a little unfortunate using that Millennium Falcon piece that you can't really put it on a hinge. So you really just have to take that front piece off and then take the canopy off. But I have two pilots in here. In the uh, expanded universe, there's a pilot who sits kind of a little bit forward. And then this guy back here, he's the co-pilot or the gunner. And you know, I had to get a little creative how these guys sit in here. And it's actually intentional that this the pilot sits a little more forward. So that didn't leave a whole lot of room for controls. You can see my two by one slope here and then just one of these tiles here, giving these guys some controls. But I did a little detail in the back. I have some more printed tiles and some transparent red pieces back there, you know, just trying to give it some definition, but really there wasn't a whole lot of room left. Now here's the front section. I'm just gonna give you a little peek here. I pulled the canopy off. You can see I have a Technic axle and then, you know, this kind of triangle or three pronged piece there. And so I really have kind of two sections. I have, you know, this kind of section building in a direction for the wings. And then I have another piece in there. You can kind of see that brown uh, Technic connector piece. And that is what connects, you know, the kind of side engines to these pieces up here. So really it was kind of a really fun challenge of uh, building in different directions, but also trying to fit all these pieces in there in, there really wasn't enough room and I barely got all that in there. I was happy that it all fit and I was able to get all these different directions to work out. And here's another shot of the internal workings here. You can see some plates and you know, this Technic connector here. And so what I did is I slid this section off here. Now it really doesn't hold on very tight. You can see I've got some Technic pieces there, but I've got these plates coming up here. You know, these kind of run all the way through the wings here and connect with those, um, you know, triangle Technic connectors. I'm not exactly sure the technical term. And then I've got, you know, wedge plates coming down here and these run all the way through the solar panels. I talk about with my mocks that sometimes they are more model than toy. And I get asked about the swishability factor. Um, some of mine are better than others. This one is really kind of a heavy ship, but you can see I can pick it up here and it's holding together pretty well. My only challenge is here, see I knocked a piece off over here, is there's not really um, very good places to grip it. so you know, sticking my finger in here and knock that section off there. But as far as a technical challenge or the use of Technic pieces and really kind of pushing myself to kind of challenge some of those boundaries I have, you know, I feel like 
I really did that. I really kind of grew a little bit more as a builder with this one. So even though it's maybe not as sturdy or strong as, you know, an official Lego set, I think this one looks really great as a model sitting there on the shelf. But I want to know what you think. So as always, leave me a comment down below. I love hearing what you guys think about these mocks and thumbs up this video if you liked what you saw. And if you're new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. You know, that kind of helps keep you in the loop on future mocks. And uh, I've got some ideas for next year. Now, as far as TIE Fighters go, I do think this is going to be my last TIE Fighter for a little while. Um, I kind of need to take a break and I have a really cool idea. Hopefully you guys are on board with that and I'll tell you about it soon. But as always, thanks for watching everybody. I'll be back soon.